Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do an acrylic painting and it's another in the Quarantine Still Life series. We're actually going to paint a um, still life of a mason jar with some green onions growing in them because I heard that you could actually grow, like when you buy green onions at the grocery store because they have the roots attached, you could actually just put them in a jar of water and they'll last a lot better and they'll keep growing and growing and growing and growing. So I thought that I would give that a try since we had some in the fridge and and I had used some in a recipe and I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could just keep these growing. Because if you know if you keep them in the bag from the grocery store and leave them in a little crisper, they eventually get kind of slimy if you don't use them up. Um, so I don't have the call to use them that often, um, but you, you know, I will just use them all up when we get them because I don't want them to go bad. So I'm excited to see if they will last in this fashion. So far, so good. So I'm working on an eight by 10 stretch canvas and I'm sketching with a watercolor pencil. And this is a tip that I learned from Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa. She did her underpainting sketches for acrylics with watercolor pencil. And I'm like, well, that's the most brilliant idea I ever heard because then you don't have to worry about graphite lines seeping up through. So I thought that was really kind of cool. So I got my basic little Prego jar there, which is what it was. It was a uh, recycled washed Prego jar. Um, our town does not recycle. So I, since they stopped the recycling program, I've been saving every glass jar and washing them. And um, I've got quite a few <laughs> over the uh, over the last year or so when they stopped that program. Uh, but they do come in so handy. Like if I'm sending, well, before back when, you know, school happened, I would send my daughters to school with like uh, overnight oats or um, salad or something like that in a mason jar. And uh, they just loved it. If, they didn't, if it didn't make it home, at least I felt like, well, it got one use anyway before it ended up getting tossed. Um, so after getting that sketched out, getting my bad lines kind of smushed away, I decided that I wanted to do a background. I wanted... Um, since this, the green onions are so much green, like that lime green color, I wanted something to be a compliment. So I thought, oh, a nice corally pink color would be really nice as like in the background. I was just thinking it would be just kind of fun and bright and cheerful. And um, I really need some of that. I mean, I'm sure we all do, right? We've all been, you know, stuck at home and um, life hasn't been back to normal yet. So at least the time I'm recording this, maybe by the time I post it, you know, everything will be open and nobody will be sick anymore and everything will be great. But, um, but yeah, I'm like, I need some bright and cheerful colors. Uh, the, the, what, what I had used the, the uh, scallions on actually were some scallion pancakes with sourdough discard. Cause I'd been making sourdough bread like a maniac. And, um, you know, you're feeding that sucker every day and you got to pour some off or you're going to be like, <laughs> I'll be overrun with sourdough starter and mason jars. <laughs> Oh man, glass jars and sourdough starter. I should put the starter in the glass jars and give it to my neighbors or something. I don't know. They'd probably uh, close the shades when they saw me coming like the Avon lady. They wouldn't want anything to do with me. Uh, but anyway, I wanted a bright background. That was a roundabout way to say that. And I thought for the tabletop, I don't know, I was going for a gray. So I eventually just kind of slapped on some ultramarine blue and some um, burnt sienna and kind of smushed them until they made a lo uh, lovely, lively gray. Uh, the paint that I'm using is I'm using um, some golden open acrylics because I was kind of actually I was like hmm, what do I want to do this in do I want to do it in gouache do I want to do it in oils and I really wanted something that was a little more instant gratification-y so I went with acrylics and I went with open acrylics for the main part because um, I like them and they're a little slower to blend and um, then I didn't have all the colors I needed because I just had a little intro set and you know the world's closed so I haven't been able to go and buy anymore um and so I just used some of my regular artist acrylic and I did use a little bit of slow dry gel just to kind of help things stay a little more blendy in the later layers. I, I don't like how the the uh, slow dry gels thin out the paint like and make it a little bit more translucent. I don't like that, except in the finer layers when I'm doing glazing, then that's fine. Um, so for the first layers, I just try to paint fairly quickly. This painting was a pretty quick painting. Um, uh, I don't know exactly how long it took. I just kind of had, uh, I was watching <laughs> Netflix basically. Well, not really watching. I don't really watch stuff, but I like having it on and like listening to stuff while I'm working. And um, so I was just kind of enjoying that while I was, you know, puttering around on my little quarantine still life. I've been just trying different things, you know, to keep myself occupied during this uh, lockdown period because it's such a weird time and I feel like I should definitely be expanding my skills and trying new things. Uh, plus, if I sit still too long, then I just get all stressed out and I, that's not good for anybody. Um, so hopefully you found some time to either relax or to create or do something to make you feel good every day because I think it's necessary. I'm using a variety of different um, different tones here, different green tones. I've got the phthalo green that came in my little open 
uh, set that I bought. And then I got some sap green, that's an M gram color. I've got some burnt sienna, which is an M gram color. I'm using some of the, I think it's Hansa yellow. I think that's what it is in the golden open acrylic set. I got the modern color set, which was um, that nice bright yellow, had a magenta, had a thalo green, had a thalo blue. Uh, what else? A white and um, like a pyrrole scarlet, I think. So it was a, it was, a, I like that assortment better than the traditional assortment they had. And I was just trying it out for the first time. So when I was at AC Moore, I had just bought a set. It was before they, they closed down. And um, I thought, well, I'll just go and buy some more if I like it. And I guess I could order some online. I'm keeping a list. I'm trying to run out of things, actually. I'm trying to use some stuff up because I have so many duplicates in my craft room. I don't know if you do, if you have, you know, more than... <laughs> more than seems reasonable, but I certainly do. So I'm trying to take this opportunity to force myself to use what I have and um, and use stuff up and then decide whether I need to restock it or if, okay, that was a fun thrill, but I'm over it. You know, a lot of a lot of products are kind of like that for me. So, okay, that was fun. I used it up, but uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, don't need to go there again. Um, and that's fine. I think it's fun to try different things. It's fun to, uh, to have different hobbies, especially where I do art and crafts for a living um to have some things that are just kind of you know extra just different diff you know it's a hobby it's fun you know i think everybody knows what a hobby is oh my gosh can you tell that i have not had people to talk to outside of my family for like two months three months i don't know what is it march 225 um I don't know, just using a small round brush to paint the roots on these little green onions. Now, I do notice at this point I was, I didn't have enough contrast. Um, my lights aren't showing up as much as I want them to, but that's okay because acrylics dry very fast. Even the open ones dry fairly fast, especially when you're mixing them in with other paints to round out your selection. Um, so I know I'll be able to go over that. And also I'm working at an angle here. So if it looks really weird, it's because I've got a, um, actually I have my water bucket propped underneath the top of the uh, canvas because I was getting a lot of glare. That's probably my biggest, um, my biggest issue with the golden open acrylics is that because they dry slower, they do have quite a bit of glare as you're working if you're not working at an angle. And uh, it's difficult to film at an angle because my I have an overhead filming set up and I could put a tripod up, but I find it's kind of tough to film around my hands and body when I'm doing that because I'm kind of a cramped space currently. So uh, where I film anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, hey, nothing's perfect. Uh, <laughs> you gotta do, you gotta, you gotta make do with what you got. So now I'm putting in some highlights on the sides of some of these green onions to um, kind of separate them from the pack because they're all kind of similar, almost the same color. They're all kind of close together there. So it's hard to, to uh, differentiate them. And since I had recently cut them to put them in my scallion pancakes, I had like the, you can see the open, almost like a straw at the top of them. And I thought that was interesting. So I wanted to highlight that and get that um, showing up. Now at this point, you can kind of see the paint getting a little bit gummy. And you've probably experienced that if you've worked with acrylics before. Um, it just happens at a later state with the open acrylics, but you definitely get this kind of like um, gummy stage where the paint almost wants to clump up on you a little bit because it's starting to dry it's starting to set up and um, usually when I get to that point I do either find another area of the paint that I can work on or you can kind of really see it right there um, or I'll just kind of stop and let it completely dry and come back maybe the next day maybe in a couple hours just give it plenty of time because the open acrylics do take longer and it's probably best to give it overnight to do that also I've noticed like with the open acrylics and this can happen with regular acrylics too but it just the, the window when this can happen is much smaller with regular acrylics, but if you accidentally drop water on your painting or you need to go back in and rework an area, it will want to lift up the paint from the background. And that will happen with regular acrylics too, but only for like an hour or so, then it kind of cures enough that you can, you know, go over and it's not going to lift what's underneath. At least in my experience anyway, with regular acrylics versus open acrylics, I definitely prefer the open. Um, but you know, I don't really do paintings with acrylics that much. I tend to use oils or gouache if I want like a kind of a, a layerable, you know, heavier body media. Um, but I use acrylics a lot for like furniture, which I would want faster drying or other craft projects or backgrounds for oils. And on all of those applications, I prefer a faster drying acrylic. So I haven't decided whether I want to invest in more open acrylics or not. I am keeping a list of colors I would like in case I choose to do that. Um, but you know, they are, they're kind of expensive. They're an artist grade acrylic. So they are, you know, they are on the pricey side. 
So now you can let me know what you think in the comments below if you think I should, you know, go for it and get some more. If you're like, eh, not really your thing, Lindsay. I think you should stick to watercolor or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I, paint with, I paint with whatever I feel like painting with at the moment. I try not to let others influence that because um, you're never going to make everybody happy. So trying to is just an exercise in frustration and futility, uh, especially on YouTube because there's so many diverse people that come and watch videos and everyone has their own favorites and mediums and preferences. And some people like time lapse and some people like um, live and some people like, you know, out videos that are several hours long and some people like time lapses that are five minutes long. It's a, uh, it's such a variety. Oh my gosh, this is so rambly. Uh, so I'm just defining my edges here. I am using a small brush. Speaking of the Art Sherpa, that's one of her brushes right there, one of her silver uh, brush company brushes. Uh, she makes a line, she's a line of art, of uh, acrylic painting brushes through them, which is, they're nice, I have them. I should use them more with my golden open acrylics probably. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm blending a little bit. I am able to, without it getting too gummy for some reason, down the bottom of the, of the plants. Um, this angle is so weird. It looks like everything is really lopsided. And I think it might be a little bit lopsided, but certainly not as much as it looks with the, um, with the, the, uh, the angle of the camera and the angle of the canvas. But it definitely helps, like, to tip it up like that when you're doing these details. Now, I didn't like how I had that big gob of green stems together, so I did grab some of that background color, mixed up some of that coral, and just kind of sliced in some to break up that green. So, you know, a lot of times you have to look at your still life and you have to look at um, your painting and you have to be like, hmm, that's not working. That's how I, that's how it looks in the still life, but I'm going to change it because, um, because it will look better if I add a little variety here or I add a different line here, basically using the design elements to create your painting or to improve your painting above from what your regular uh, still life looks like or a reference photo looks like. You definitely want to, um, you want to put your voice in there and you want to make choices that may not be exactly what your reference material is. And um, I apparently turned my camera, I forgot to turn my camera on when I started to put some other shadows in there. But what I did was I mixed ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, made a nice dark gray and which was the same color I used on the tabletop basically and darkened some of the areas. And I'm also going in and I'm adding some darker values to the scallions themselves since they do kind of look like a big mushy green mess. So I wanted to kind of um, separate them a little bit. And this is a very puttery, uh, puttery painting. It was fun. It was something to do uh, during this quarantine. I find that I have to keep myself busy. Relaxing just doesn't seem to work for me right now. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't last long before I start stressing out about something. So I'm going to keep myself busy uh, to cope with being home all the time. It's weird. I think the thing is, is that like there would be like at this time normally, you know, I'd still be running my kids around. My got my daughters don't have their license yet. So I'd be taking them around to this and that. I'd be watching their softball games. There would be a lot of little uh, breaks in the day. I'd be going to uh, the gym, going, going to swim and you know, not having that in your home, at least, you know, from someone who works at home, you feel like, well, you should be working. This is the middle of the day. You should be working. And then you feel guilty if you're not and you've got all this extra time so you think I really should be you know bettering myself and um, making the most of this time when I don't have a huge heavy workload and then you feel extremely guilty when you're just chilling out. I don't know if other people are having that issue but I certainly am big time and it just you know feels better to find something to do and do it rather than just to you know read a book or whatever. I can't seem to sit still and focus long enough to do that. Um, this has been a frugal crafter therapy session. How do you like that? <laughs> I'm putting in some stronger pink tones here. They're the same uh, same tone from the background just with less white added and I'm just kind of dabbing it in to kind of like you know how glass will kind of compress and intensify certain colors. That's kind of the effect I'm going for. Um, definitely gilding the lily a bit, definitely pushing the colors beyond what they are in my still life. I have this jar literally sitting on top of a box with a piece of paper on it, you know, up, up so it's up at eye level pretty much. And, um, you know, so there's not a heck of a lot of color other than that green. I'm really kind of using my imagination and just experience from painting other still lives and glass objects and stuff to, um, to get this, uh, 
get this all wrapped up here and making a little bit more interesting. And I also um, intensified the shadow because there was, I did put the white paper behind my still life and saw this really neat cast shadow. It looks kind of like a crazy haired dude and I like that. So I kind of got that shadow when there were some darker corals and I broke up the shadow areas with some brighter colors because when the light comes through the glass, it gives you these little bursts of magnified light. So so that shadow that's too, that's behind the, uh, the jar, um, I'm really happy with that and that's what I did for that. And then I'm finishing up with a white Posca pen, which is an acrylic paint pen, and just kind of brightening up um, some lines. And these extra fine tip Posca pens are so awesome. My husband got me a set of 12 for Christmas a couple of years ago, and um, they are fantastic. I did buy some whites on their own too, because I use them more often. And you can unscrew the white portion of the pen or the colored portion of the pen, unscrew it backwards and fill it with diluted acrylic paint so you can reuse the pen. Um, they're wonderful. And my kids actually love using them too. Lila actually has borrowed all of my colored Posca pens. So, um, so I, I, otherwise I would have grab some green and yellow and added a little more color that way too. They are fantastic. At least try the white if you're on the fence about using these. Um, those extra fine whites are so great and um, you don't have to worry about anything going weird like a gel pen might turn yellow over time. I don't know, uh, but the Posca pens won't. And I use um, Promacryl Blockout White with water to refill it when I want to refill it. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. It was fun to paint and it was a nice distraction. I hope you're finding something fun to do today. Until next time, happy crafting.